Well, hello there. Thank you for joining us here at Coolest Life. My name is Tony. I'm here to talk to you about the shrine. What is it? What do they do? And should you join? Yeah, that's right. The shrine. Because I'm a member of the shrine. I've been a member about 10 years. So you're getting this information firsthand, not by some researcher or some reporter or some expert. I know all about masonry and shriners. No, no. If you're not a member, you don't know Jack. I assure you. <laughs> I'm not being arrogant. I'm just telling you facts. <laughs> if you ain't a doctor, you don't know about being a doctor, unless you're a doctor. I'm, I'm just telling you. <laughs> so anyway, let's go ahead and get on into that and maybe dispel some rumors about the shrine and maybe masonry. And I'll talk to you about the organization, how it gets together. And and again, the main thing is, should you join and, and why should you join and, and how is it all made up? Because you're now entering the coolest life, shrine and Masonic edition. So what is a shrine? Uh, well, the shrine is, um, well, let me just give you the, the textbook example of what a shrine, a shriner is. Okay. Shriners International is a brotherhood of men with great character, compassion, and strong values who are committed to family fellowship and making the world a better place. We seek to attract men of different backgrounds, career paths, ages, and interests. The unique ideas, beliefs, and perspectives they bring to our global Shriner family. Now, our members are known for their loyalty, camaraderie, and their steadfast support of each other and their communities in times of need. We have members in six continents. So essentially, you can go anywhere in the world. And you'll always find a friend or a brother. Um, so they've got members that are in all those continents. Uh, and um, their main philanthropy is the Shriners Hospital. Now, what is the Shriners Hospital? The Shriners Hospital is uh, made up of 22 hospitals throughout the uh, U.S., Canada, and Mexico currently, and they provide health care for children. That's primarily it. That's their. That's pretty much it. Uh, now, how do they do that? Uh, they provide it to them free of charge. Probably the only one that's even close to ours is uh, the one that uh, that they do in Memphis. Um, I can't remember the name of it right now. It escapes me. However, that's, they've only got one hospital, whereas Shriners have got 22 hospitals. And you've seen a lot of advertisements on, on TV. Typically, they used to be only for, uh, only the Shriners supported those hospitals because those children that get seen, they get seen free of charge. They also don't need a Ronald McDonald House. A Ronald McDonald House, of course, is a place for families to stay near a hospital, so it's not quite as, as expensive as a hotel is if they're needing to go out of town to have their child treated someplace at a regular hospital. But in Shriners hospitals, they actually have suites that the family can stay in in the hospital. That's just not found any place else. You're not going to find that in your regular, you know, St. Whatever hospital or, or, you know, general medicine hospital downtown. You're, you're not going to find that. Only in Shriners hospitals are you going to find that they actually have suites. And typically those suites are right next to your child's bed. Uh, in a sense, the very next room over. So you can get some sleep and yet you're still right there with your child while they're in the hospital. Now, uh, that's the big philanthropy. Doesn't mean that they don't have philanthropies that uh, even more than that, they've got larger philanthropies that are, um, uh, they might support some some local uh, philanthropy. So whatever that might be. Uh, so let me uh, turn this around really quick and show you some things I got written down for you to kind of kind of show you the structure and how it's built. All right, so let me break this down to you uh, just a little bit. Uh, or should I say, let me break this down for you just a little bit. The organization is actually called Shriners International, as you see right up here. Now, Shriners International at one time used to be called, this big giant word here, it was, as it pops up here, the Ancient Arabic Order of the Nobles of the Mystic Shrine. That's what they used to be called until about four years ago, maybe five. It hasn't been all that long ago that they actually changed this name and called themselves now Shriners International. So, so that's what they are. Now, how do we, how do I become a Shriner? Well, first you must be a master Mason in good standing. Okay. You have to be a master Mason, good standing. Your card needs to be good. Your dues card needs to be valid and everything. And then you can pledge or petition to join the shrine. Typically there are three main organizations that a, that a master Mason would join after they become a master Mason. Uh, that of course they would stay involved in their blue lodge, but uh, in the regular lodge. And I've got 
uh, videos on that uh, that can tell you more about how to be a master mason and everything and uh, and and what all that entails. But uh, those are the three main organizations, which is Scottish Rite, which I also have a video on, and York Rite that I'll be making a video on very soon. Um, the other organizations within uh, masonry are Eastern Star, Grotto, Order of the Amaranth, and there's several others. I'm not going to go through them because I know I'm going to miss one or two because there's probably another 15 that I could list down here that just keep going. These are the three main ones. When someone becomes a master mason, they typically join one of these three right off the get go. Okay. So, uh, now within the shrine, you have units and clubs. Now clubs are normally spinoffs. So if your city is here and, but your, um, uh, is your main city where your, where your main shrine center is, uh, or your, yeah, your shrine center. They also call the shrine temple. They're actually getting away from the word temple. They're tr starting to call them more centers because temple sounds too much like a religious temple and, um, masonry in general wants to kind of get away from that. So you hear them called shrine temples. Um, normally the older members will call them temples. Sometimes the, the outside of the building still says temple, but if you go inside all the writings and all the publications that they have says shrine centers. But anyway. I digress. Uh, so it might be in a major city, say San Antonio, but Waco, there's a lot of members in Waco, but Waco's way over here, but they're not quite big enough to be their own, their own shrine center. So they'll become a club. So these, this club here will be, will be affiliated with this main shrine center here. So you might have one shrine center and then you'll have several cities that will have their own clubs. Um, uh, affiliated, uh, me and, uh, in Georgia, mine was called Al Sias Shrine. It was out of Macon, but, uh, we were actually in Columbus, Georgia and Columbus had a, uh, Columbus Shrine Club. Now within each of those clubs and or within those, the, the shrine centers, you're going to have groups within them. So there's separate units. Like if you wanted to be a shrine clown and go do circuses and stuff, you may be part of the director staff, road runners, scat cats, which is basically those people that, that drive those little cars. And there's lots of different groups that are called different names, um, for, for those people that drive cars. There's are all over the place. Keystone cops. Actually, I think that should be a K there for K O P S, um, honor patrol, legion of honor, motor corps, ritual units, uh, 10 Lizzie's, and there's a bunch of it. It just depends on where you are. The, the units that you find listed here might not be in every shrine center, but they, uh, but there might be this many plus another 10 more involved in the shrine center. For example, I know the one in Macon, Georgia, Alsaya, I think we have about 10 units is all we have. But if you go down to the one in Tampa, they probably got about 20. I mean, it's amazing how many different units they have. Each one of them serves its own purpose. Yeah, you can get in here and be a clown and also want to drive a little car. And then I also want to be part of the honor patrol and also be part of Legion of Honor. Yeah, you can join all those. You can begin to uh, make yourself a little thin though. So you got to kind of pick and choose what you're going to join. And that's just within the shrine. That's if you're not even involved in Scottish Rite or York Rite. There's all these extra units. Understand something. You join this, you join your Master Mason, you're going to pay dues there to your your regular Blue Lodge that you become a Master Mason, and then you're going to pay dues to the Shrine. Shrine dues is going to run you, uh, the cheapest I've seen it so far is $100 per year, and the most I've seen so far is $250 per year. So it can vary. It depends on what Shrine unit uh, you join, whatever. And basically, whatever jurisdiction you're in, that's the Shrine you have to, if you're near San Antonio, you can't be joining the Shrine over there in Houston. Technically, can you? But how, how active are you going to be in one that's so much further away? You would typically join the one closest to where you live and or work. So, so you would join the one in San Antonio and you would find out what kind of groups they have there. And you can also start your own groups and units if you have enough input from others. So that's what that's all about. And, uh, what else I want to tell you about that? Oh, so you get your dues here. Each one of these is going to have their own dues. Their dues might be zero. It might be $25 lifetime. It might be $25 a year. It might be $10 a month. You never know what it's going to be. It can add up really quick as you join more and more organizations. Also, if you're, if you're not part of the, if you are part of the main shrine, you're also part of a, a local club, an affiliate club. You've got dues here too. I think my dues here was running me, uh, 150, 
No, maybe maybe it was seventy five. I think it ran me seventy five dollars here. My clown dues was running me twenty five. I was a member of one of these other ones. I think it was running me twenty five dollars a year. The shrine one was running me one fifteen, and then I had my dues here. So it can add up pretty quickly. Luckily, it's not a monthly fee for most of them. Um, it is a yearly fee. So, so that's pretty, pretty good. Uh, Shriners Hospital, I talked about that in just a little bit. That 22 Shriners Hospitals. Um, the shrine has been around, um, 150 years. So that's a long time. And one thing I wanted to mention to you about that, that's the information I just read you a little bit ago that I expertly read. And I want to say something to you. Uh, 13 Masons met in a Knickerbocker's cottage in New York City in 1870 and they formed the first shrine. Uh, now, similar to a college fraternity that used a Greek motif, the organization's founders modeled the uh, iconography ceremonies and the themes after Arabic Nights theme party of one that attended while they toured in Europe. And I believe it was Morocco was where they went to. So that's kind of where they got their whole theme of wearing the fezes and everything else. And while we're talking about fezes, let me get that out of the way and show you a fez. So that's a fez. Nice, huh? Yeah, that's my fez. Uh, so I'm a member of Alsaya Shrine. As you can see here, it says Alsaya. Um, differences in fez, of course, they come in different sizes because they are hats. You'll see uh, double. You'll see some that are stitched. You'll see some that are double, single jeweled, double jeweled, and triple jeweled. And you can see this. As you can see, there's two lines here. So, you know, this is a double jewel. This is basically your first kind of level in a sense. Most people, if they say, well, I'm just going to dabble a little bit in the shrine, they'll normally get a single jewel or they'll get the one that's actually, it's it's just sewn. This little this little piece here that's sewn here, well, actually, it's a little white, makes them a little wider than that, but they make, they'll spell out the letters shrine. Now, we mentioned those those director staffs. And if you're if you're the, the president of that particular shrine, you become what they call a potentate. So your potentate is your 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 head guy in charge. Then you might get the word potentate across here, and maybe the year you were a potentate, because that will never change as long as you're enshrined. Someone will get the word divan and D I V A N. Divan is basically the uh, it is is the the officers of that particular shrine. So they've got a, a ray ban, a chief ray ban, oriental guide. So those people are part of their officer corps and those officer corps are called the divan okay d-i-v-a-n so when you first get part of the divan you might you might get you know the name of your office or you might just write d-i-v-a-n because you can use it for the next three years until you become potentate and then you want to get one that says potentate across here because he's the president so uh and you'll see differences in this especially the single jewels if someone gets a single jeweled this crest here or basically these lion's claws will be lower and this this shrine logo will be across the top and let me see if I can find one. Well, look at there. I did find one. You see how that, that, that sword is, is on the top of the head here and how this one here, how it's, how it's actually going through the center. You can design that either way you want. You can either do it like this or do it like that. In fact, there's, there's actually a little better one there. That's what you're typically, you're going to find on logos on paperwork, uh, dues cards, uh, websites, you're going to find this logo. You're probably not going to find this one because this one here is more of the standard logo. And they kind of do this to kind of do spacing a little better when it comes to the Fez. You know, they want to make it as big as possible, but they don't want to make it too cluttered. So that's what you'll find. Now, what is this thing? This is my shrine. This is my Fez hat. So you can see it's got a, got a holder in here. It might hold a name badge. It might hold my crown of honor jewel, which I can't seem to find. I wonder where my crown of honor is. Anyway, um, you might put cufflinks in there. Obviously, put your name in there, and so it'll go in there just like that, and poop, it protects it. Uh, you'll see some other guys that they'll have a they'll have a dual they'll have a dual zipper around the bottom, and they'll have a big another section down here uh, that will be on the bottom. Normally, that's for their Scottish Rite cap if they carry that with them. A lot of Scottish Rites you leave your Scottish Rite cap at the center that you're part of the Scottish Rite, but some of them don't. Um, the only other thing I want to say about this is. This is pretty customary. The other one is triple jeweled. Normally, if you become a potentate, you'll get yours triple jeweled uh, here. And this is a this is a pretty standard uh, hookup here. Some of them are not quite as ornate. Some, some are just solid. And then, of course, you get a holder down here. Now, this one here is actually a clown. Can you tell it's a clown? 
someone gave that to me an, an older shriner gave that to me who was a clown he thought it looked good and so i think it looks good too so you can get things that say director staff or any other unit you might be a part of you might want to get something special it's basically a brooch is what it is but it holds down your 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 tassels here from going around and the tassels come in different lengths this is pretty standard length some are most i think when you get them are are about this long and then you can buy this one here which is a long one there's even some that are even longer they get down to here so i get them i guess one's 18 they get them like 24 inches long but that's pretty much what that is about the uh about the, uh, the shrine fez and you can see others uh some are softer some of this thing lays to the side but it's basically the same kind of shape is what that is so their mission as a shriner is, is just that it's it's to um, better yourself um and to it much like what, what masonry is in general and also to uh, help your community um through philanthropy work philanthropic work a lot of times you might see a shrine circus the majority of the money made in a shrine circus pays for the event uh, the next uh, check goes out to local Shriners Hospital. Maybe maybe Shriners International, but for the most part, it goes to Shriners Hospitals. Uh, it'll go to one of their one of their major hospitals. It's a very medical care. No matter where you go, is expensive. And to know that uh, your child here in the United States is taken care of uh, free of charge, and or Mexico and or Canada, taken care of free of charge, and let's just say it covers a whole lot more than a Canadian health care plan does. It's not exactly as free as you think it is, and I only say it because I know a whole lot of Canadians that I tell you so. Co-pays and different things like that, hidden fees, it's, 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 it can sneak up on you. It can sneak up on you. Anyway, um, so why did I join a shrine? Uh, I joined a shrine to be a shrine clown. I like the whole aspect of being a clown and, uh, and, and having fun and going to circuses, and I've been able to uh, participate in probably – I think I've been in nine circuses, something like that. Some of them were actually from, not even from my, my Shrine Center. My Shrine Center wasn't having a circus, so I went up to Atlanta and participated with them. Uh, did that with them maybe five years, six years. Uh, also parades, so you can dress up as a clown and, you know, mess with people and the kids and stuff like that. So really, it's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy parades. I plan on going to a parade here in uh, South Texas. They're having one, I think it is next month. I need to check on that. Maybe it's this week. <laughs> but uh, I need to check on that. Um the uh uh oh let me mention something real quick this is i just put some 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 pins that, that i've gotten through my travels I, I put put those on here that i've gotten and you can do that you can do this belongs to you so you can do whatever you want to with your own fez case so i just happened to put mine across the top and, and some of them were uh military uh that uh, they honored the military this one here so you know i'm a I'm a veteran and everything. And there was this one here. He was, he was a police officer, so he made these up. And this one here is from Georgia, so they did those up. So there's a there's all different ones you can get. And uh, one thing in masonry we do is uh, we collect um, we collect uh, pins and coins, uh, just like those challenge coins from the military. They get those big coins. Yeah, I, I've got a bunch of. Them. I probably got I don't, know, I don't have a ton of those. I probably got thirty. But uh, as far as lapel pins, like like that, boy, I probably got, I probably got over a hundred, <laughs> and it's not because I'm looking for them or, or trying to go buy them. It's they come to you as an exchange. You get them for visiting and doing different philanthropies and stuff like that. Um, uh, should you join Shrine? Um, if if what you want to do is get together, compared to Scottish Rite, Scottish Rite is a little more formal. Uh, basically, coat and tie is kind of required at most Scottish Rite meetings. Not all, uh, but most. Um, Coat and tie is rarely, and I do mean rarely, ever, uh, uh, asked that you wear that at a, at a shrine function. Uh, if they're having a nice dinner or something like that, the potentate's ball, sure. But as a regular meeting, no, no. They they expect you to come in t-shirt and shorts or whatever you want to wear. They don't, really don't care. Um, uh, York Rite is a, a, tends to have more of a uniform. They're more coat and tie. And, of course, if you go up in the commandery, they've got a, they got a standard uniform that they expect you to wear at that. So, but shrine is a little more laid back, a little more casual. The ritual is a little more casual. Typically only takes you one day to go through shrine, not two days like it does for some of the others. Um, um, and it's, it's just, it's just more relaxed and laid back and, and they have a little more fun. And I'll say this, most shrine centers that you'll find, they've got a bar there somewhere. Some of them actually have a bar like the one in Savannah. It's actually open to the public. So, uh, not that it's a bad thing. I mean, what do they say? God made uh, uh, water into wine, not wine into water. 
Just saying. Something to think about. <laughs> so, but, uh, uh, but anyway, it's, it's not that they encourage drink because they don't. I mean, none of them actually encourage it or force it. And actually, alcohol that I've never found has been in, involved in any type of initiation uh, while I was, while I've been in, uh, in masonry, there is zero, there's zero normally, uh, through in the initiation process, alcohol is basically forbidden during those times. So you can't be drinking alcohol while you're trying to initiate somebody and, and they don't force you to drink stuff. And it's, it's not that at all. It's not that kind of a fraternity because I'm, I'm in another fraternity in college and yeah, you know, alcohol might've been involved in one of those. So, and it may be involved with the fraternities. I can't speak for all of them by any means, but, uh, so, uh, uh, if you have any questions, I'll put them down below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Uh, but, uh, I enjoyed the shrine. Always have enjoyed the shrine. I haven't attended a meeting. I'm in attending a meeting in December. I don't think I went to one here in January, but typically we, no matter where you go, you can find a shrine center someplace to go to a meeting or uh, a unit, not a unit, but a, but a club, right? Cause a club is the actual local center. So you can find a, a, a club to go to and visit with them. But uh, we'll let you go. Be sure to like, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this uh, and got some information out about the, about the shrine. Again, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the description, uh, down below, not in the description, but uh, down there in the comments. And uh, I'll answer those as best as I can, as quickly as I can. Because I'm going to let you go because you're now leaving the coolest life, Masonic edition, in this case, shrine.